Why won't your organization engage in peace talks? You don't mean exactly peace talks, you mean capitulation, surrendering. Hello, this is Duya. For this week's episode, I'm here with Genji, half British, half Burmese hip hop artist. Genji, thank you so much for joining with us today. Thank you for uh, having me. So, Genji, could you please introduce yourself briefly? My name is Genji. I'm born and raised in Chiang Mai. I'm a half Burmese, quarter Shan, quarter British. Mm -hmm. I come a family of like organizers and activists mm -hmm. and uh, I'm trying to fulfill my role as a community organizer and uh, an artist and producer here in Chiang Mai, trying to raise awareness, create movement and support the resistance across Southeast Asia, but more specifically in Myanmar to reconnect with my roots and my family. So you're half Burmese, so did your father tell you about like what happened in Myanmar like when he was in Myanmar? He's a, he's a very active uh, political figure in, when I was young and he would like always constantly go in and out and do his political movements and uh, he had his own army, he had his own mm. Movement. He had, he worked as the vice chairman for DAB. You mean resistance resistance group? Right? Yeah, resistance group. Uh, mm -hmm. He would always be in and out through the borders. Mm -hmm. He worked with like, a lot of ethnic armed groups, mm -hmm. and uh, so. But he was born in 1946, mm -hmm. and so he was part of the one of the first people that that came out and was doing resisting ever since he was young. And uh, you can follow it in his book. It's called The uh, Burman in the Back Row is a self-published autobiography. Yeah, read it if anybody's uh, interested. Since your father is a, a political figure in Myanmar, what kind of life do you have like as a, as a son of a political figure? Do you know the landscape of the Burmese politics? I know the landscape of po Burmese politics in, I would say, in general. Mm -hmm. Like, I, mostly, I wouldn't say in Burmese specifically, mm -hmm. because uh, Burma is consists of many ethnic groups, right? And so, like, when people ask me Burmese, it could mean Burmese political, like, in, like in the center, you know? Okay. Not talking about, like, Kachin, Shan, Karen, Arakan, or, like, because there's so many other political sides. And so, I have my mom who, was, who runs an NGO. She was a director of NGO. And so, she and my dad together in the same household, they would work together and talk about, you know, the, what's happening in Burma every day, every morning. So, every time I go to school i would hear them in the morning talk about like what's happening today in in myanmar like what's going on this is going on uh what's happening to the shan leadership what's going on in, in you know karen state what's going on in kitchen state you know and i would hear this every day you know and like talk about they would talk about oh how like the Burmese go military government killed so many shan people fighting against the karen people you know fighting against the kitchen people so every day i would be aware that this is happening and also like I would go with my mom to like refugee camps because we didn't have like a caretaker. So I just followed my mom everywhere she went. So she would go to like refugee camps and I would see like the life of like the people who would run away here. And a lot of her work is to do with humanitarian aid and trying to give support to, you know, grassroots organizations on the borders that's supporting like ethnic people and IDPs and refugees and uh, trying to protect their rights. and. All that and so yeah so me growing up I'm aware like you know when my dad would not be at home I'd be like oh I know where he is you know like he's like somewhere gone in the border you know like gone inside or doing something you know and so I'd be aware that there's always be happening so as a kid I knew what was going on in Burma and the situation so I was always constantly aware I just didn't know you know as a kid that what to do at that point you know because like, I'm not I'm just a kid, you know, but but now at this age, like, it's, it's shaped my, because my parents give their life to, you know, their country or like their community, and it's like shaped my my mindset when I do my work. Since your parents, yeah. uh, they're, they're both from Myanmar, yeah. so, but you you were born and raised here. Do you consider as yourself as a Thai? It's a, it's a funny question because yeah. like, Long time ago, I was a kid. I'm Sean and Burmese and English, right? So I'm like three things, and I live in a country where I'm not their nationality. So I'm 
what people call like the third culture kid you know mm. like that doesn't fit anywhere where like i'm not thai enough to be thai i'm not burmese burmese enough to be burmese i'm not shan enough to be shan you know so like so i'm kind of like lost in between like these spaces but i have like it gives me access to these spaces but i don't exactly like you know i can be like oh yeah this is like boom here you know but for me i would consider myself i'm from chiang mai you know that's why i tell people but i i connect to these spaces connect to these communities and do my part like the way i do my music the way i do my organization or like any of my work is a way to like reconnect and try to do my part in the community so whatever it is is like my kind of outreach and my kind of like trying to yeah connect and support and do what i can for the each community uh, what makes you interested in uh, hip hop i loved hip hop ever since i was little so i started listening i played gda when i was little and uh, you know in gda you turn on the radio yeah. and I, i didn't know what the music was you know but it was cool i was like ah oh. you know I, i sort of like had sort of an idea what hip hop was but you know and when i was able to listen to it constantly on the gda radio yeah. I would listen. I'm like, oh man, this this music is dope. You know, I like this music. It's it sounds good. You know, got your head bopping. And slowly, like, I got into. I started like looking into like, oh, what this kind of music is, and I'd be like, oh, this is hip hop, and you listen to this, and I really got into gangster rap. I just, but I didn't know as a kid why I really liked it. You know, I just thought it was like really cool. You know, you like wear baggy clothes and the fashion's cool and you know, and it sounds good. You know, where. I didn't understand the concept of hip hop yet, like the 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 real meaning of hip hop. I just knew like, oh, it sounds cool. But eventually, at a later age, I stopped listening to hip hop for a bit and went to like punk rock, and you know, went into like resistance music, and like you know, anti-establishment music. And I was like, oh, this is good. And then I came back to hip hop, and I revisited hip hop, trying to understand you know why I liked it, and I understood like, oh, hip hop is like, they're just talking about reality. You know their their reality, whether it's gangster rap or you know women's rap, all this kind of rap. They're just talking about the reality and trying to spread awareness. You know through through hip hop, it's it's another form of resistance. You know it's just that people might not relate to it's resistance hip hop. So I started listening, getting more like conscious hip hop, like Mos Def, Talib Kweli, Immortal Technique. These are all like big resistance hip hop, and I started delving into the history of hip hop and how it was born. And it came out of resistance. It came out of like all the poor communities, and I'm like, wow, this is like hip hop. And the reason like I like hip hop so much is that it's so raw, it's so like, yeah, it's so real, you know. And it sounds good, you know. And so, understanding more of hip hop, I wanted to, you know, it inspired me to use it as a medium to talk about. I wanted a way also for me to like reconnect to my people, and the way it would, because a lot of like ethnic people in Burma. In Myanmar, they they're not allowed to like teach their language, so I'm Shan, right? I'm I'm quarter Shan, and like I have a lot of friends with Karen, who are Len, who are like Lisa, Pao, or these are all different people, and they're like they get put underneath like they can't teach their language, and their culture is wiped out. It's a way of the Burmese military government, right, to destroy the culture of all the other ethnic people, so to stop resistance, right? And so the way that I could help maybe is is to raise awareness, but also Put all these voices into the rap, you know, and the way to that would be like, oh, I can bring all you together, and that way we can like, because what Burm- uh, Myanmar needs is solidarity, you know, like unity amongst every every ethnic group, you know, ethnic groups, ethnic armed groups, ethnic organizations, like, you know, sometimes they have problems with each other, and there's like, it it stops us from unifying, you know, and being a big force to like destroy the military government, and so I was like, why well, we can in hip hop we can act as that. You know, as like a unifying message, you know, between all ethnic groups together to like to act as one. You know, and bring about like the truth and bring about the realism and bring about uh, the news. You've also like uh, engraved language. You know, that way, like if I'm rapping in the language, you cannot erase my language. You know, because I I rapped in the language. You know, that way, like you're gonna have to take it down on YouTube or something. You know, where you my language will always be there because. You can't take it away, you know. Yeah. And so the same way, when I invite people, I want everybody of ethnic group to come and rap, because I want them to represent it, to to show them like, oh, we all stand for the same 
cause and we're here together to like support each other you know and so this is a way to like unify our the you know it's, it's an optimistic view but you know try to unify everybody and like trying to bring it in art you know because mm. like i'm not a, i'm not a soldier you know like i'm, I'm from thailand you know I, i'm in the side you know luckily for me i'm, I'm very privileged you know like, i live in thailand i live in Chiang Mai. i'm very safe but i hear like all the stories and my friends who run away here but we do what we can from this side you know so this is our our job on this side is to like help all the others inside so because we have more freedom in that sense and so that's what i bring with hip-hop is trying to connect and unify many people like who was born in in the 90s we like especially from the 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 center of burma we don't know about those kind of like things like what military did to the the ethnic people so we we don't have any idea of what's really happened there yeah that that's really inspiring that you want to do multi-ethnic like rap things <laughs> yeah. when the coup happened like how do you feel about that like did your father tell you anything about the the, the recent coup like in 2021 coup yeah when it happened you know it's terrible you know and of course it's terrible and so for us Even though like Myanmar was considered under democracy, like during the time when they said, "Oh yeah, we're democratic and you can elect a thing," and then they have the 2008 constitution, which made it all fake, you know, which is not real because you can't really change anything. And so for us, my, you know, my my dad is blacklisted, you know, my mom is blacklisted, you know, from the country. So, but for us, like we always thought, like if it really changes, we'll go back, you know, we'll we'll move inside. But only when it really changes, you know. And so we know that when it was like, oh, when they declared a democratic government, it wasn't real, you know, like it was all fake. It was because the war was still going on. They were still fighting us on the side. In the center, it was fine, you know, like quote unquote, yes. you know. And so like for you, it was like maybe, I, I don't know, because I, I wasn't inside, but people think it was, like, it was normal, you know. But for the people on the outside, there was still war, still fighting. And it didn't change, you know. For us, it was like, oh, it never changed. Considering like the geopolitics of Myanmar and like the way it was going, we were like, oh, we were just like, oh, okay, they're gonna play like this. You know, this is the game they're gonna play. Is that they're gonna go like they're not gonna care about their face. You know, mm-hmm. even though they already were killing people on the side. You know, but this is like full out against the people that they got most support. You know, as like, okay, so they're just gonna be like cold blooded. You know, boom, kill everybody. You know, but we were more like, moved by the. Will of the people to to act. The young generation of like, you know, the doctors go on strike. People go on strike and and willing to start work. And the CDM movement and the momentum that it was creating, you know, and the PDF that came out of it. That's very important for 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 everybody. You know, that movement that came out of it. So yes, it's very terrible. But the good thing is that everybody started like, you know, changing. And it's like. Step towards change, you know. Like this is this is the way where I feel like it's going. We're going in the right direction. We keep on fighting, you know. We got to keep on fighting. This coup was a catalyst for everybody to be like, oh, I gotta wake the fuck up, you know. Like, you know, we gotta do it, you know. And and people who are scared to revolt are going, coming out now, or like, you know, they're they're doing they're making the changes in their life, you know, like doing all the things that they can. And uh, I think it's good in that sense, in an optimistic way, you know. Yeah, we are we're more. Pleasant surprise! Not surprised that the movement from the inside. It's like, oh, cool. Like, do you do any like activities for helping or maybe supporting to the to the people? We did a song called "Rise for Life," and it was during the COVID epidemic. There's like six ref- big refugee camps for Shan people, and they were cut funding because all the money was going into into Burma, like the main Myanmar. Like the all the funding, all the humanitarian groups were like, oh, we're gonna go work inside now, with the with the Burmese government, you know, since like it was a democratic, right? So like, so they cut the funding, and so and it was COVID, so it was making it hard harder, and so we had to raise money. So we made a song and we did like a campaign, yeah, and we made half a million baht and made like 12 tons of rice to 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 support the refugees, and every time we do like a concert. We would always support uh, the Shan refugees because, like, it's in this area, and so we support whoever's in the area. It, we change every time, like, depending on who needs what at this moment, right? And so, 
like we did another concert where we one of our rappers and his family were inside during the coup because they're part of the CDM and they they need to get out and so we 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 raise enough money through the concert to get his family out but because like we we know our our we're not like that big you know but we know our targets that we can reach realistically you know we can like we can help a family you know but we I don't know we can help like we want to help out everybody but it's just like we're not we're not there yet you know we're not like we don't have enough spotlight on us to like so we do what we can as a, as a community and as like a rap group and so this is like we we just constantly make concerts and music to talk about the situation here in Myanmar or the border or the migrant situation and all the people who are marginalized or the ethnic people here too or in Thailand you know it's depending on who the rappers that who want to be represented you know they want to come and join us and talk about the issues so but mostly yeah triple edge has always been to help whatever cause is on the inside you know it, if it's like refugees humanitarian or the resistance whatever they need you know we'll try our best to like provide funding or like provide money support you know try to shine a spotlight you know and the best we can you know that we can during the the coup we created a, a song called built on blood in their course of democracy travel ethnic autonomy with national economy is a cause of people's sovereignty with national community either business or fake peace Oh, no respect for the damn deceased Opportunists do anything to buy your feet We're business fuck military under the sheets We're my country so divided And it was to talk about, to give like spirit and like support all the resistance fighters inside, you know I don't know if they like ever listen to our song But you know, but we, we did it in support for their, their cause and the PDF It's a tough battle yeah, yeah, I, I really like that song. Like it, 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 it got me goosebumps every time I listen. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. I, I yeah, you should, uh, you should uh, go give uh, the guy that we got the family out. Yeah, that's he's the at the end. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah, he's the guy, and so like his family is here now, and they're all legal here now. What's your opinion about the the relationship between like Burmese and also like ethnic minorities? As a growing up as a Burmese and Shan person, is like conflict. Because like my dad wouldn't be like as accepted in certain areas. My mom would. My mom's from the Shan community, so she works with Shan groups. And so if my dad comes, I was like, oh, it's the, you know, it's that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like I always feel like, oh, like, you know, my dad wouldn't hang out in these groups, and my mom wouldn't set out with gr- these groups. You know, it'd just be like kind of interesting as a, as a kid growing up, like oh, like. Cause it's not I I because I understand like oh I, yeah I'm you know I'm the as a Burmese person I am the oppressor you know like I I understand like I totally understand it's like it's like being the white person in America you know it's like yeah you have to like, act different you know and be like kinder and do like you know as the guilt after this coup is interesting because like it's a lot of like you said people may maybe were made more aware of like the lies that were given in the newspaper was not real and there's like a lot of like propaganda that was against ethnic people or like and now that people can see the relationship definitely improved but like the ethnic people still but we understand I mean some I, I can't speak for all ethnic groups right but like but yes we're like oh cool like they're, they're on our side now you know it's like oh cool like they're 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 fighting with us and you know they have so many I, I bet they feel some sort of way because they they've been suffered for so long, you know, and and you know now that you have like six, you know, twenty thousand people, twenty five thousand, you know, like I don't know how many thousand people like coming over, you know, and they're it's already they they're struggling, you know, they're they're struggling as their own, so it's hard also to like, of course they want to help and and put people, and but it's also like, it's a lot of struggle for them as a community, you know, to support like sixty thousand feed sixty thousand people or like do other thing and like. You know, give support, give, uh, I don't know if I can say it on this, but, you know, give, like, certain things, you know, and uh, it's hard. But they know that, I, I would I would hope that, you know, that everybody believes that this is, uh, their heart is in the right place and the mind is in the right place now. And so that they understand that we're fighting for the same side and they can see, like, oh, that we've been fighting this war for so long and it's not, and this is finally, like, you, you can, the Burmese people inside who were, like, under propaganda, can see like oh like it was it was all fake mm-hmm. you know and it's good that it's just right now as a community we have to like support the people who are like fighting you know and yeah. and 
try to give like as much funding and support we can to, to all, everybody that's fighting. Yeah. What do you hope for the future of Myanmar? I mean, I would hope that the military government is destroyed, you know, gone. Constitution is gone, you know, like everything like that was built with them is gone, you know, because it has to, the system has to go from the root, you know, you have to take it all out and then plant a whole new tree, you know, to, to make it thrive. Because like this, the system is the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, you can kill men online or like kill these people, but it's it won't change if yeah. the system is still there. There'll be another men online that come up. You know, another snake will come up. You know, and so we had to kill all the all the snakes. And I think the the I and I, I know that people understand this this you know because the PDF like you know go against all the military. You know, like if you walk and they're military, you're gonna die. You know, like you know what I mean. And I'm like, oh, I'm very, I'm very like. You know, it gives me like so much spirit. I'm like, wow, it's so amazing. I'm so like fucking, you know, proud of the people to do this, you know. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so I think they already understand, the people understand like, oh, you have to destroy everything that the old was created, the old created and have a new government that recognizes the ethnic space, ethnic people. And yeah, I, I want to just say, we destroy the military government first because like the whole political sovereignty of Myanmar, the hegemony, the divide of power in mm -hmm. Myanmar is so interesting, you know, and, and once you destroy the military government, but what comes after is a big question, you know, people always ask the question like, what do you think after, you know, like what's going to happen? But I think we, our first goal is to destroy the military government and then we can talk about the solution. You know, because the solution is, it's going to be, it's, I feel like it's going to be hard, you know. But I mean, not as hard as fighting the military government, but it will be, it will be easier without the obstacle, you know, without having to like fight this enemy trying to kill you, you know. It's more like you're trying to negotiate these, you know, political reign or whatever. But first is, I wish for a destroyer of the military government. And that's a simple goal, you know. We all can... A goal that we can all stand around, you know, and, and know. Yeah. So, have you ever been to Myanmar? I have been to the liberated area, mm. and, uh, and I have, yeah, just the liberated area. But other than that, not really. Do you want us to go there, like inside Myanmar, if there, there's, there's no coup or there's no military government at all? Yeah, yeah, I would love to. And my, my, my parents would move back. Mm. My dad would go because he has like twelve brothers and sisters. Damn. <laughs> yeah. So like, and, and uh, I only seen one sister ever since like he was because he couldn't once he exiled, he was exiled. He couldn't go see his mom. His mom died. His father died. Yeah. So he only got like a letter. But he he said this is the life he chose. Mm -hmm. He chose the life of. So that mean you 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 never had a chance to see your grandparents. Yeah. So like I never got to see my grandparents and like, mm. and but I'm sure because they have we have twelve brothers and sisters. He has, I'm sure like I have so many cousins. <laughs> I I probably don't even know how many cousins I have. You know, I, I if I go to Tongu, I'm like, who is my cousin? You know, like I probably have a million cousins, and I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, yeah, it would be it'd be cool because and then that way like we also and my mom can go to Shan State yeah. and see the you know, uh, Kingdom. Yeah. And, and see where it's going on and see the community and finally because that's like her dream is to live in Shan State mm -hmm. so yeah my dad would probably love to just go to Tongu and see like since he's never been back since he was a kid you know mm -hmm. and so, yeah I, I hope that your parents could go back to Myanmar one day and also you, you had a I wish you had a chance to go back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would love to. We would love to. I want to like go in between, you know, because like I made, I made my house here in Chiang Mai, and but but I feel like it's my like my homage, my my right, you know, like my birthright. I have to go to like go see, go live in Myanmar, you know, like I, I would probably come back and forth, you know, and like because live in Tongu, live in Kengtung, live in Chiang Mai, you know, to like yeah, and continue making hip hop yeah. and rap. And, uh, mm -hmm. around this area across cross border yeah. you know like yeah I, I wish for that day because like my parents are getting old so do you like anything to add if uh, if the youth is listening 
or like the resistance is listening, then I want to give them all my support. If you want to share a story on Triple Edge, you can, you can always re reach out to Triple Edge, you know, reach out to the page, reach out to me. Like if they want, if they want to make music, anybody wants to make music about the, you know, about life or like express, you know, politics or criticize mm -hmm. the government. That's why uh, Triple Edge is here. You can like cover your face, it doesn't matter, you know, like I, I want to give a platform to, you know, even not, it might not be that big yet, but, you know, it's somewhere you can start, you yeah. know, if they want to do something. That's uh, all I want. Keep on fighting to everybody's out there. Keep on fighting. Uh, a lot of people are believing, believe in you. Well, Kenji, thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. For, yeah. He don't want people to know the taste of being free. Cow snakes in the shadows. Now put them in the heat. Let them hear our rattle. Now everyone must battle. Only at the feed we could talk about peace. We'll fight forever until the battle is won. Revolution will live as long as there is a sun. For too long, look down the barrel the gun. The government fears most when we unite as one. Yeah, I'm